the absolute pinnacle of all my thousands of hours spent on Hereforge. Behold, my magnum opus, my masterpiece, witness it. Quick disclaimer before I get on with the build video. This build is part of a contest taking place across December in my Discord server. The theme here is that of a crusader kingdom, which is facing off against an evil cult and a horde of undead ghouls. At the time of this video's release, that contest is still open and you can join the Discord with a link in the description below if you want to partake and end up getting your character dissected in the video coming soon after this one. The second build video with all the creepy cultists and freaky undead monsters that will come soon after this one. And as per usual, all of the links to these models will be in the description below in both videos. Now, enjoy. The format that I'm going to go with here is fairly simple. With each model, I'm going to present what I want to create, both in terms of appearance as well as personality and feel, and more importantly, how all, uh, all of that comes about in Hero Forge. And then, you know, we'll, we'll see how loyally I actually manage to stick to that. We'll, time will tell. It'll, it'll depend. We'll see after each model. As for the order, I'm going to be progressively ramping it up in terms of the model's importance as we go through the video. So it will start with some fairly grounded models, and then we'll get crazier and bigger as we get deeper. And yes, there will be both single models as well as stacked double models in this. So, let's start off with an easy introduction to the whole shtick. A low-ranking faithful zealot fighting a ghoul. Now, both of these models will be fairly simple in nature. Two single models put together on one base. The real tricky part, honestly, is going to all be in the posing, right? As I, I want the two of them to be kind of grappling and struggling against one another, and for the zombie to be clawing its hand down the human zealot's face, and the human zealot trying to stab the zombie in return, etc. And, you know, of, of course we're going to be adding a bunch of decals all over the place. Blood, tears, dirt, religious symbols, all that lovely stuff and well you know time will tell how it works out but i always have fun when i get to make these kinds of in motion battle poses with two separate models so without further ado let's get to it This next one will also be two single models put together on a base. I I, I can I want to make some sort of inquisitory like bishop who is in the process of inspecting and initiating one of the zealots to make sure that they're fit for service. And this one will be intended to be kind of a fairly dark and creepy vibe to it. And it, I'll probably be adding some fairly grim implications of what happens to the zealots who don't live up to the right standards. You know, a bunch of blood on the floor will probably be a fun ways to use the new decal kit bashing for sure. Also, speaking of the decal kit bashing, I. I have in mind to make the bishop this kind of like I, I want to put like a creepy white paint on their face and I may also be trying to paint on some like custom eyebrows using various cut off part of decals as well so you know we'll see how that goes time will tell.
There can't just be lowly zealots and like creepy bush bishops though. There, there, there's also got to be some like real proper crusaders and paladins in this build. So now we're going to make our first really complicated model. And that is a crusader who is limping wounded off of a battlefield. And this is the kind of model I can really have a lot of fun with. Because there will be a lot of detail, right? Like a lot of extra items, a lot of grit, dirt, blood, the decals, anywhere and everywhere. And of course there's going to be two models. So we can, as always, make some really nice custom gear and custom helmets and whatnot you know and since this model is coming off of a battlefield as well i'll likely also be using the new clothing pattern decals and using them for very, very you know subtle color variations and patterns on the armor and this can go a long way in adding a bit of extra grit to a character and it also doesn't require pro either so you know really everyone should be doing this but yes let's let's get on with it Now, to finish off this row of zealots, we're going to be making the biggest zealot of them all, a proper paladin. And in this universe, I don't imagine a paladin being, you know, a normal thing. I'm thinking like a truly elite unit, right? And of this build, this will probably be the one that'll take me the longest, because I truly intend to go all out and make the most badass looking holy righteous warrior that I can. I'm talking stacked models, decals all over, holy fire and lighting to go along with it, extra assets, custom armor, and ex awesome mid-combat pose, and horn hair to add to the motion of it all. So, well, <laughs> wish, wish me luck, basically.
so we've gone big with the paladin you know we've done a true champion of the faith so let's scale it down lil again the idea with this kingdom isn't that every single soldier is a religious zealot rather it, I, I imagine that it does have an actual army as well so now i'll make two fairly simple and uniform looking soldiers and normally when i make some kind of kingdom build i i, I like to go a little bit crazy with this section and i tend to make everything from militia to infantry to heavy infantry to rangers scouts archers knights and riders and pikemen and marines and you know you get the point it's a bit too much so for the sake of keeping it simple i'll just be doing two different types of melee infantry here a light and a heavy unit to some who have seen some of my older builds or reddit posts and stories and stuff these designs at least one of them may look a little bit similar and that is very much by design because it is the same faction i'm doing here and well you know I'll, look i like to world build okay don't sue me Now, at this point, it's it's basically tradition that with every build I make, there has to be at least one militaristic general in super cool armor, you know. And so, of, of course, that's what we're getting to now. We've just done the soldiers, so it's the best time to do it. And I'll probably be utilizing my favorite plate armor trick here by, you know, layering two models over another and using the half plate curate with the curious with the banneret tunic to make some really nice, realistic looking plate armor. And uh, since I've already done the like big epic mid combat pose with the paladin. I'll probably do something different with this kind of commander, like a more disciplined and militaristic stance with as, as straight the back as you can imagine. I, I think this will set the two models apart a little bit. I'll probably try and make a cool custom helmet with feathers and horns as well. Now, since we're doing a church and an army, we, we also need to have an aristocracy, you know, to complete the, the true triple circle of evil, you know. I, I'm not going to clutter this though and make a bunch of different kind of knights or nobles, but I, I, I wanted to at least make one fighter that looked like it was from the nobility. So I've chosen to make some kind of arrogant noble-born fencer who probably thinks a little too highly of themselves to be on the battlefield to begin with. And we'll see if I double model this or not. I'll probably try, but with what I have in mind, it's fairly the simple design. So honestly, I might just end up slapping a second model onto the base to interact with it instead. Perhaps, you know, skewered ghoul or something. We will see.
Now, I, I am recording this in hindsight to say that I am, I'm kind of very sad to say that I completely lost the initial recording for one of the models that I was most proud of here, and that is the Lord model, right? This was supposed to be kind of a nobleman of the kingdom, and it was really grumpy, have sacked face and everything. Unfortunately, all of the initial footage for that is gone, aside from a small segment where I slept on a little detail, but I will do a quick presentation of the model anyway. So, there, there is a, no recording of me creating this model, right? This model, as you can see, is fairly ground, it's fairly down to earth, there's nothing overly special going on here, there's no magic, there's nothing fancy, there's no glow or whatever, however I will say that this is potentially one of the best layerings combinations that I've ever come up with. So what this is, is it is the um, it is the Lionhearted Armor Chest Guard combined with the Biker Vest. So the Biker Vest is what provides this nice color here, whereas the Lionhearted Chest Armor is like the shoulder, the main like thing here, but then of course the the, the biker vest has a pushed out enough belly to make this belt go around the Lionhearted chest guard which is underneath and it just turns into this amazing crisp combo. Now combine that with this with this pose with the hands in the pockets and you know actual pockets which is just the side gear items on the main model which are then posed into and colored like skirt to look like pockets right. So if I pull these models apart you'll be able to see it is going to look very cursed but uh, yeah here you go. You can now see the different pieces that are used here. Now, there's also things like these boots generally make the pants go very slim, which is why I removed the boots on the second one so that the pants can remain baggy on, on the edge here. There's all these kind of nice little layering tricks, but... And of course, I, I love this face trick where you make one face calm and then you make a really, like, gaunt face angry underneath to get this look. And of course, combining the French mustache with the with a little pointy beard as well, it's a nice combo. So all in all you get a very, very grumpy nobleman with a, a rose in his hat, a nice necklace, some awesome layering on the chest piece here, and a little de decal kit bashing eagle, which unfortunately has a nice little uh, clip there, but you know, we'll, we'll pretend we didn't spot that. Okay. And now we are back at it with the religious zealots again. This time I am making two enforcers, very edgy and evil looking. Their purpose is basically to be, you know, the inquisitors of the archbishops and to root out the faithless heretics from the populace. Now, unfortunately I lost the initial recording for these guys as well, but I did manage to salvage the recordings from the later refining stages of these models, so there is that at least. Anyway, most of the work in these two models is in the posing, so, you know, getting that menacing look of advancing intent is the most important aspect here. Now again, the recording is gone, but you, you, you have an ample chance to see the work I've done on this anyway. Now, it's time for the Archbishop, and for this I want to make some. I want to create someone who looks like they truly have a messiah complex, you know, and make a pose befitting of someone who thinks that they are the hottest shit in the world, probably, you know, at the end of some grand sermon or whatever. I, I do need to be careful though not to go over the top with all the gold and whatnot here, but I'm going to put together some layered clothing that looks clean and regal while simultaneously looking complicated and fancy, since, you know, th this is the Archbishop after all. I will also be trying to keep to a fairly similar, albeit more grandiose, version of the design that I put on the bishop in the earlier in this initiation model as well. I, 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 you know, I like to keep continuity between characters through the little things like that.
for our penultimate model, I want to make a kind of King's Guard character, right? And a model like this is often what I find most interesting to create, since, you know, this isn't some crazy salad with, you know, 50 million scrolls or a fancy general or a king or whatever. It needs to be a fairly simple and sleek design, but simultaneously it needs to look regal and powerful enough to befit a royal guard. Fortunately, I have been practicing a lot with new layering combinations lately, and I do think I have something that is going to be very clean. I will also be, do be doing a different color scheme on the metal and cloth this time around to distinguish it from the soldiers and the salads, so, you know, wish me luck. Now, for this final monarch model, I don't actually envision your stereotypical righteous god-king a la Aragorn style, but, but rather a bit of a bumbling fool who can't quite balance the crown on his head. You know, more Denethor as opposed to Theoden or Aragorn. But anyway, I, I, I wrote up some lore about this on the information page, but I, I won't get into it here. The point is I'm going to be making a fairly casual but still regal and fancy looking custom clothes set along with what I think is probably one of the coolest custom crown designs that you can make in Hereford, so check out that one. But aside from that, this guy really won't be as over the top as some of the previous models. The color scheme is also going to mostly match the Royal Guard, as I, I, I want to set these two models apart from the rest with their own distinct look that matches.
But Durf, honestly though, I mean come on, Heroforge just dropped mount and familiar customization and you didn't make a single model here based around that, I mean come on, don't worry my friend, left as a final bonus model at the end of this video is the great culmination that all of this has been leading up towards, the final battle between the light and the dark, a model which incorporates the absolute pinnacle of all my thousands of hours spent on Heroforge, behold, my magnum opus, my masterpiece, witness. That's it. Uh, uh, all right look if if you really made it all the way to the end of this video then thank you very much for watching now as i said at the start all of the links to these models will be in the description below so you know if you want any of them by all means go ahead and grab the links from there also the link is to the dis discord is there as always as well also bear in mind that this is technically kind of a part one video as i also have the second half of this overall build the cultist undead side of it is in production still that video will be coming out soon hopefully not too long after this one and then there will also be the dissection video Video as well for the winning models of the crusader slash zombie contest running in the discord anyway again thank you very much for watching if you like this video please press like if you didn't then by all means press dislike and until next time bye bye